very fascinating and and as, as you're explaining it music is a strong intervene with our memories and emotions and you've spoken a lot about this but for example hearing a song from our past can transport us back in time triggering the sights sounds and feelings of an event and i'm pretty blessed because i understand seven languages and it gives me the ability to connect deeply with all the memories emotions and association i have with each culture and language and you've also studied the association between music and vivid autobiographical memory. Then teach us about this subject. Yeah, so this is kind of another area that I've looked at. I just came up with this. I remember like vividly driving with a, some of my friends in the car and I don't remember which song it was, but we were, we were just listening to music and we were talking about music and talking about like how kind of crazy it is that you can hear a song and it just like transports you back to a time or it brings back these very vivid memories and I at that moment was like I wonder if anyone's studied that I was in grad school at the time and so I looked into the literature on it and there were a, a handful of papers looking at this um, and but no one had really compared music to other types of memory cues so I think a lot of people have an intuition that music is better or this particularly good way to cue memories but until I had done my original study, no one had really compared music to other types of sensory cues. So um, in my initial initial study, I was just wanting to see, are memories cued by music different than memories cued by other things? Um, so in this study, what we did was we compared memories evoked by music to memories evoked by pictures of, of famous people, the same famous people we used in the previous study. Um, so what we did in this task, we had participants come into the lab. Um, they listened, we played 30 different pieces of music then the question with all these studies is how do you choose the music? <laughs> this is very idiosyncratic on an individual basis. Um, we used a method that was um, developed by Peter Janata, who's at UC Davis, and he was the person who really kind of pioneered these, this topic. Um, he had published a couple papers on this when I had started my research on it. So what this method of selecting songs is, is you um, we have a bunch of tracks from the Billboard Top Hot 100 year-end charts. And we would randomly select um, songs based on the participant's age. Mm -hmm. So there's a finding in memory research called the reminiscence bump, which is this period of life that you have, if asked to provide autobiographical memories for you, you tend to provide memories from this period, which is like late adolescence, early adulthood. So we picked songs from that period of life. So someone my age, like early 30s, would hear songs from like, you know, like early 2000s to mid 20s tens or so. Um, uh, so like you, the, the whole point of this is picking the songs that people are highly likely to know. You know, there's a lot of research showing that people develop their musical tastes around that period of life too. So we play them a bunch of these songs. And after each song, we ask them like, did that trigger a memory for you? And if so, please describe the memory in as much detail as you can. We audio recorded all of the memory descriptions. And we did the same thing with a bunch of pictures of celebrities. So like I would see pictures of people who are famous in like the early 2000s to the late 2010s, like pictures of Lady Gaga or whoever, I don't know, just like famous celebrities from that time. Um, and the same thing, we'd show the celebrity and we'd ask them, does this trigger a memory for you? If so, please describe the memory. So then what we wanted to do is see, are these memories different between the two conditions? And what we did was we looked at these, you know, we had these long memory descriptions, um, you know, something like, oh, hearing that song reminded me of driving in the car with my friends in high school. It was like a hot summer night and the windows were down and I remember sticking my hand out the window and the wind blowing on it. So we would take that and then we'd, we'd break it down into the component parts. We'd say, okay, um, the time was in high school. The location was in a car. The, some of the perceptual things were feeling the, the air blowing on me and feeling the hot weather. And so we categorize each of those details as either being relevant to the memory or not relevant to the memory. And then we'd see, okay, how much of this description that you gave me actually contains information that's relevant to the memory. And so what we found was that the memories cued by music tended to be more, I'm using the word relevant, but we would say like episodically detailed or episodically rich. It has more details about the actual episode or event. Um, the music evoked memories tended to have a greater proportion of these types of details, whereas the face memories tend to be like, oh, I remember going to see this movie on a date and um, 
Clint Eastwood when it's in the movie. And Clint Eastwood also did this movie, this movie, this movie, this movie. So they would tend to focus more on the person and describing their um, knowledge of the person rather than a, an a episode of their life. So it seems to be the case that the music evoked memories tend to be very episodic, whereas the face evoked memories tended to be more just factual information about the celebrities themselves. Well, song so, is more emotional, right? It, and, and, and if you see in a picture, you're mostly like, as you say, you're connecting it with that person. Uh, but, but what is it? What is it about music and that area of like youth that makes it sticky? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it's a, it's a good question. Like, like I said, this was an initial study, which is just looking at, are the memories different? Um, and now I'm interested in looking more at like, well, how does music trigger the memories? Why are these memories more detailed than at least the memories evoked by the images of faces? Um, I don't really have an explanation yet. Part of me thinks that music is kind of a contextual cue and that it's like in the background while we're doing a lot of activities and while we're, you know, going to parties and our wedding and like our prom and these kind of big events, there's music there. Um, and I think that might be one, sometimes people criticize and they say, well, that's, the faces is a bad comparison or TV shows would be a bad comparison because music is in the background while you're doing things. Whereas these other things are just the focus. So you're focusing on the image of the movie and it's not in the background. I'm like, well, well maybe that's something that actually makes music unique relative to other stimuli is that it's like always in the background. So I think in some ways music might be a good cue to kind of like put us back in that experience that we had originally because it was actually part of that, that exact experience. So I think maybe that's one of the explanations that music is a good cue to kind of bring us back to that original context that we were in when we had, we're doing the, you know, event. Mm -hmm.